Hey y'all, it's Punch Pro, and today I'm going to teach you how to run retro assembly locally and make it available to any devices on your local network all in just a few minutes. Let's get started. But first, what is retro assembly? Let's dive into the demo on their website, retroassembly.com, and talk about it. I'm gonna keep it simple. RetroAssembly is exactly two things. It's a web-based front-end library manager and launcher, organize your games, automatic thumbnail downloads, that kind of thing. Number two, it's a host and server to both emulators that are built in and games that you've provided yourself. And I'll repeat that, you must bring your own game library. On the demo on their website, you'll see a bunch of public domain games that you can demo. One of my favorite parts about RetroAssembly is the demo is exactly what you get when you run this yourself. So it's a great way to see if it's the right fit for you. The UX is extremely straightforward. Click a game to launch it and controller support is built right in. I'll show you more about that later. So what, you wanna play around with this with your own game library? Cool, you have two choices. You can create an account on RetroAssembly.com and then upload game backups to their server and you'll be all set. Or you might want to not upload your game backups to a random server and instead decide to run this locally. Whew. Good choice, by the way. Woo! We can accomplish this in just a few minutes with the help of Docker. If you don't already have Docker, you can head over to docker.com and download Docker Desktop for your platform. The best part about both Docker and RetroAssembly is that they are cross-platform and run easily on macOS, Linux, and Windows. Once you've got Docker installed for the first time, reboot and launch the desktop client once. Accept any terms and you can skip creating an account. You won't use this UI much except for stopping containers that you forgot you left running. Let's head back to RetroAssembly.com and navigate to the Docker Hub page for RetroAssembly to see how we should proceed. You can also find a link to the Docker Hub on the RetroAssembly's GitHub page. We'll use the Docker CLI or command line interface for running RetroAssembly. If you're unfamiliar with the command line, this next few steps might go above your head, but stick with me, it's not too tough. Okay, so we need to assemble the command we want to run. I've got a folder on my local machine called RetroAssembly, and we need to point Docker to that folder so it can have a place to store persistent data. I also put the games I wanted to add to RetroAssembly in that folder, but as you'll see, that's redundant, as you still must upload those games to your Docker container. Let's open a text editor and put all the pieces we need together. First, we need our local path for RetroAssembly. I'll paste mine here, yours will be different. Next, we need the command we'll run in our terminal. I'll copy the example from the Docker Hub website and paste it here. This slash path to your data portion in the command is what we'll replace with our local path. Just paste that in, then copy the entire command, then launch the terminal app and paste the command. Note, you'll see some downloading happening for your first time running it, and then without any fanfare, it will be done. If you're on Windows, you'll probably get a network request pop-up. Make sure you approve that or you won't be able to access RetroAssembly from other devices on your local network. And if you're like me and you're worried that maybe the command didn't actually do anything, just run it again and you'll get an error showing that it's already running. Now that it's running, we can open a web browser and navigate to localhost colon 8000. You'll see the same UI from retroassembly.com, which might be confusing at first until you realize it's hosting the entire platform locally. Cool. To get started, click on login and set your username and password. Then you'll get dumped in an empty library. Click on the add button and you can add your games one platform at a time. Simply select all the games you wanna add and then click add. Reminder, BYO games. I'll fast forward through adding the games though. Okay, as you can see, once you add the games, box art downloads automatically. Sometimes it can't find the box art, but it can still find the other metadata. That's okay. I couldn't figure out how to manually add box art from the UI, so I won't cover that here. I really like how clean the user interface is. And if it's available, it'll also add some screenshots and a YouTube video for each game, so you can see what you're getting into before launching it. Just like on the demo page, launching a game is just a matter of clicking on it and following the on-screen controls to get playing. Now that we have the basic setup, let's see how we can connect other devices on our local network. First, let's open terminal again and type ipconfig to find our local IP address. Here's mine, yours will be different. And note, this is the internal address, not the external address. <laughs> Let's switch over to my phone to see how this works. Okay, so here we go, piece of cake. Pull out your phone or whatever, navigate to that IP address with colon 8000 added to the end, and boom, you're good to go. Just tap on a game to play. You can even load your save state from your desktop. And the on-screen controls work just fine in a pinch. Pretty awesome, truly. There's also controller support on desktop. Just connect any modern controller over USB or Bluetooth and it will recognize it right away. I used a Switch One Pro controller over USB-C and it was a piece of cake. When you're all done playing and you wanna shut the server down, you can do so easily in the Docker UI on your desktop. Just click on the stop button 
and you're now fully shut down. The server will store your settings, saves, and game files in the retro assembly folder we set up for it. You can review these on your own and easily migrate to a new server with these files. Okay, that's a wrap on the retro assembly tutorial. It's a fun and easy way to create an accessible retro library for every browser enabled device in your home. Comment more if you want more tutorials and make sure to subscribe. Goodbye.